Hey guys, Ben here and today I want to talk about what I did to prepare for my MCAT exam and what I kind of wish I did differently because now that I'm reflecting on it, there's lots of mistakes that I made uh, while preparing for the MCAT and I wish that you guys don't go into the same fumbles that I did. And you know, MCAT season is coming up. The 2018 application, I mean, applications to take the MCAT has opened. So people are now registering for it. So I think this is a great time to go over the mistakes I made, the things that I did right while preparing for the MCAT, and just my general overall advice for people who are planning on taking the MCAT in the upcoming year. So without further ado, let's get started. And yes, before you guys start putting this down in the comments, I'm very aware of the giant crater on my face right here, working on getting rid of that currently, but let's go on and go, well, go on with the video. So the first thing I wanted to do while I was scheduling the MCAT is that I wanted to take it at, the, at exactly the right time. And I think I did this well because going into it, I knew that I needed to dedicate at least three to four months to studying for the MCAT. I shouldn't be doing anything else that's time insensitive in my life. And I should also be stress free when going into studying for the MCAT before I actually take the exam. And I think I did this well because I made sure to do it the fall of a semester where I was taking a very, very light load. I was barely taking any science courses. I had met all my prerequisites for the MCAT and for medical school. It's very important that you do your prerequisites for the MCAT before you register and start studying for it, which includes biochemistry, biology one and two, gen chem one and two, organic chemistry one and two, maybe three if their school divides it into three sections and psychology. I did not take sociology, but I thought I had a great, good enough psychology foundation to actually take the exam. So I had all my prereqs. I was ready to just begin content review, start doing practice problems. And I had three months to spare where I wouldn't be distracted on other things. So I could just delve into studying for the MCAT and just give it my all. So when you are planning on scheduling your MCAT, make sure you have a good three to four months before that timeline, before the date of your exam, where you can actually dedicate your time to studying. And also it's important, like I've said before, make sure you're taking those classes. And as far as how long I wanted to study each day, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to burn myself out. So I gave myself maybe around three to four hours every day to study for the MCAT, no distractions whatsoever. Phone was off, my computer was only on the applications that I was using to study. TV was off. I made sure that uh, there was nobody around in my room and that's all I did. It was just MCAT for three hours straight. And I did take a couple of breaks in between, but always moderate your breaks. So give yourself maybe 10 or 15 minutes per break, maybe a, every 40 minutes, give yourself a break. and. It keeps you in check. Now, as far as, as what resources I used, I primarily used the Kaplan book set for my content review. I made flashcards after I read every chapter on Kaplan so I can do the flashcards while I was doing practice problems. And then for practice passages and exams, I actually use free diagnostics, free exams that a lot of testing companies were giving out. Like I know when I was studying for the MCAT, Exam Crackers gave a free exam, which I thought was really awesome. It was very representative of the MCAT itself. I think Altius gave a free diagnostic. Next Step gave a free diagnostic and a free full length exam. And I think Gold Standard also gave a free diagnostic. So I did those in addition to my content review for other practice exams, I did the next step six exam package in addition to the official AMC practice exam, the one that gives you the percentiles, the official AMC practice exam one and the official AMC practice exam two. So I also know, knew going in that practice passages were probably the most important thing to improve my score. So. I also got the section banks in addition to a number of section banks from uh, exam crackers. They have the exam cracker 101 series for cars and 
really quick, a really awesome free resource that you guys can use to get both content review and practice passages is Khan Academy. They have hundreds and hundreds of videos on their website dedicated to the MCAT. I will link down below to Khan Academy's webpage and they have hundreds and hundreds of articles and practice passages for each section, each of the four sections on their website and it's great practice. So there you have it. I had my time interval set for how I was going to study for the MCAT. I decided that I was going to time myself every time I did the section banks or any of the passages by itself to see what my pace was like and I just went ham on the MCAT for three months and then I took the MCAT and I went in, did it. It was absolutely brutal but I still survived and at the end when they give that little pop-up that says do you want to void your exam I sat there and stared at the screen for a good two minutes and I was like you know what YOLO so I hit the submit button and then I had to wait a month so after a month I got my score back and I stared at my score and I was kind of disappointed I thought I would do much better because I was doing better on the practice exams that I was doing for both Next Step and the official AMC exams. And no, it wasn't a score that was going to break me. It was a pretty average score. So uh, for the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to give my exact score, but let's just say my score was between a 505 and a 510. So not a bad score at all. For a lot of people, it's an amazing score. But someone who sets high standards for themselves and someone who actually wanted to get a much higher score, I was kind of dismayed at my score. So I took the next couple of days to reflect on what I did wrong and what I could have done better. But did I take the MCAT again? No, I did not. Because I knew if I were to take the MCAT again, I would have to not only get a higher score to be more impressive, to schools, but I also have to dedicate another four months to studying for it. And I just didn't have the time because the semester, upcoming semester that I was having was incredibly rigorous and I wasn't going to get a break until the next year. And I wasn't going to delay my cycle. So I decided to go ahead and apply to medical school with the score that I had. And no regrets, I got into medical school and I got a ton of interviews, but there are some things that I could have done better that I think you guys should know about so that when you guys take it, you guys don't have to reflect on a score that you're not happy with. So the biggest mistake I made while studying for the MCAT has to do with how I approached on how I was going to do content review and how I was going to do practice passages. So my main mistake is that I spent way too much time on content review. The MCAT is less about content review and more about how you read those passages and interpret what those passages are asking you. You have to be able to efficiently read them in a set amount of time, efficiently understand what it's saying, and be able to answer the questions that they ask within it. There's hardly any content review on the MCAT. That's why there were so many people who I've seen on online forums who didn't do as much content review but focused entirely and solely on practice passages that did extremely well because they learned how to tackle that passage, how to read it, how to interpret it, and how to apply the knowledge that they got from the passage. Now, do I say completely eliminate content review? Absolutely not. But I spent almost 70% of my study time doing content review where I should have done it for in a 30-70 split the other way around. So I should have spent 70% of my time actually doing practice problems, practice tests, practice passages, and only 30% of my time doing content review. Something else that I made a huge mistake on is that after I did content review, I did no practice passages associated with the content that I reviewed at the time to basically establish what I had learned in content into my head because the only way people learn is by actually applying the content that they learn into a problem. So that's what I did. I did it completely separately when I should have also integrated that them together. It's also very important to study in a place where there's absolutely completely complete silence. If you're the type of person who needs silence to study well. I was studying in my home and there were 
four other people in my house while I was studying and there was a lot of talking, bickering going on in the background and I thought I was able to zone it out but I did get distracted a lot even though I didn't have my phone with me or my computer on a website that I shouldn't be in, I was still distracted by all the bickering. So make sure when you study, you study in an environment where you feel facilitated, where you feel like you're able to put in all the effort that you can. And for my final mistake is that when I took some of my courses that related to the MCAT, I didn't learn it well in the course. See, the thing about it is when you do content review, it doesn't stick to you as well as you would have in the course. So the course that I'm talking about is physics. I had a physics class where I basically breezed by pretty easily and I never fully, fully put those things that I learned in physics in my head. So when I was taking the MCAT, when I was studying for it, actually, I didn't really like physics as well. So what I ended up doing is skimming through a lot of physics passages and hoping that I wouldn't get those questions. Now that is very naive of me. Please don't do what I did. Make sure when you are in your courses, when you are taking those prereqs, that you internalize the knowledge that you get from those courses. And then use content review as a supplemental to get those gears working again. Don't use content review as a way to learn something all over again. So yeah, there you have it. Those are the mistakes that I made and they were pretty big mistakes. They seem minor, but if you actually study for the MCAT, you'll realize how much easier it would have been for me to actually get a highest score even and even make studying easier for me. So I hope this video has helped. Good luck on studying for the exam and best of luck from me. Please like, subscribe, share this video to your other pre-meds and I hope to see you guys on the next video.